Howdy, Scott here with All the Stray Lions. It's Friday, it's time for Postmortem. This week, we're examining Wormwood, which is a great mix of action, comedy, and good old-fashioned zombies that meets Mad Max and never lets off the throttle. I give it a 7 out of 10, and here's why. First off, let's start with what worked. What works most of all, and is most important in an action flick like this, is that the main character swaggers around, he's got that great mix of macho and charm, and he sells it all, it's completely believable, the actor does a great job. He's just gritty enough, he's just believable enough, and he's really just tough enough that you don't have any problems relating to him, liking him, and being on board with him for this whole journey. And when I say it starts the journey, I mean the whole film, it does. You know, there is no bullshit buildup about some outbreak or whatever contrivance that has been done to death in zombie films. It just starts. You know, he's in he's in his house with his wife and his daughter. His sister, well, you don't know his sister right off, but anyway, his sister is doing some sort of weird art project across town, and everything just falls apart immediately. She sees it before he does. Her model, I guess, she's doing some kind of weird photography thing. It's never really explained. It's kind of a hipster art project, to be honest. Anyway, her model turns first, and everything kind of goes to shit for her, and she has to crouch in the beams of this, uh, well, really crappy little storage shed. It's pretty cool. So while she's hiding out, her brother, the main character, finds out through uh, his suburban area what's going on, and a zombie breaks into his house and starts eating food raw from the refrigerator in his kitchen. There's a pretty big battle between him and it and his wife. They get out, they get to the car, you know, it just starts. It doesn't let up. And when I said there was no bullshit about it, that extends to the zombies, too. There's none of this like, oh, no, why'd he bite me? Or, oh, what is that? It's just, it's, you know, it's played straight, which is how it should be, because, as I've said before in another video, zombies, werewolves, witches, whatever kind of monsters that everybody knows and has seen since they were a kid, there's not going to be any doubt as to what it is, whether they're, even if they're a fast zombie like these kinds are, well, they're not really fast, like 28 days later, but they're faster than, say, uh, Romero's or Walking Dead, right? So... Regardless, they're going to know what a zombie is, like anybody would. So it's very, it's always refreshing to see the whole, you know, doubt as to what it could possibly be just thrown out the window. But especially in an action flick, because it really would have just dragged things down to have people debating whether or not they could be seeing what they're seeing. <clears throat> now, zombies are done to death. I know, I know. Especially now, you know, with Walking Dead as popular as it is, it's only going to get worse. Well, in the sense that they're going to be done more to death. But uh, the zombies in this one have an, have an interesting twist, and it's not really even so much in how they behave. It's more like what they are. In fact, they're filled with a flammable gas, right, which is played kind of for chuckles later on in a really satisfying way because the cars start to break down, and they can't really figure out why. And the main character notices that the zombies expel gas from their lungs, and uh, they jury-rig a really dangerous, really janky looking engine and force feed the zombies gas into it to propel their crappy little truck forward to kind of traverse where they need to go on their adventure. It's a really funny idea. Uh, speaking of more unique stuff with the zombies, the sister mentioned before is abducted and taken by some wacky zany scientist who's... he's a super creeper, I'm just gonna say it. He's really creepy and not you know, just horror villain creepy. He's just a creepy dude. I mean, you think he probably molested people in the past. He's just, he's a really weird guy. He plays really weird music. He seems to want to kiss the zombies. The dude's just, he's, an, he's a nut job. No doubt about it. Anyway, he abducts his sister and he's doing weird experiments. You don't really know what they're about. Come to find out that what he's doing isn't really revealed and doesn't matter. But what ends up happening for the sister is she gets to where she can control the zombies. It's done really cool. It's kind of like... It's almost as if she's directly taking over them by projecting herself into their bodies, albeit temporarily. And I don't want to give the whole movie away, but it is pretty cool, and you definitely don't see that coming. Especially because, to my knowledge, only one other zombie story has ever done that before, and it was Monster Island, I think actually the Monster World series, which was three books. <clears throat> and lastly, what really works, unrelated to the zombies, is... A plucky sidekick who is played by an actor who is legitimately funny. He gets a lot of funny jokes, great, great quips, and he makes a nice, well, actually a perfect counterbalance to the main character's sort of gritty, tough guy shtick, which, granted, the main character kind of has to be that way in an action flick. But 
the sidekick pulls his own weight with jokes and breaks up the timing appropriately. And he's just he's relatable and he's entertaining. You'll you'll probably end up liking him. He's got a good mix of you know juvenile humor and sarcasm. So that's all great. That's all what worked. Let's talk about what didn't work. First off, what didn't work is in the very beginning of the flick, the plucky sidekick, the one I just mentioned, he's got these two dudes who are traveling with him, and they get killed off super quickly, and honestly, I don't know if it was necessary. Not that they died. I mean, that was necessary, but they didn't really even need to show the three of them wandering around, strictly because it almost makes them look like uh, bigger characters than they are, especially with how quickly they die off. I suppose that's a bit nitpicky, granted, but it still stands to reason that it should have been a little quicker on how that was resolved. Also, the main character is suicidal for a portion of the film, which makes sense given some heinous things he has to do to his family because they're turned. But what doesn't make sense is how far he carries it. And I'm not talking about the suicidal part. I'm talking he meets another dude who ain't really a threat to him at all, and, you know, he ain't lived in the zombie world long enough to, to be where he doesn't trust strangers. I mean, it just started for him, right? Anyhow... He's suicidal, makes sense, because he's just had to kill his wife and daughter. But what doesn't make sense is how he, he antagonizes this guy to the extent that he does. He just keeps trying to go to blows with this guy, keeps trying to attack him. And, you know, initially I thought, oh, well, maybe, he's, maybe he doesn't have the guts to kill himself. But in reflection, after the film, he clearly does. This guy's got the balls to kill himself if he really wanted to do it. So it didn't make sense for him to keep attacking this dude, particularly after the guy saves his life and he's in the truck with the guy, he comes to and still tries to kill the guy. And it's like, at this point, it's like, dude, come on. You know, this, I, I get that he's suicidal and everything, but it just, it, they took it too far with the murderer side of it. <clears throat> also, the scientist I missed, uh, mentioned before, the super creepy one, he, I don't know, he's, he's creepy and he's a good antagonist, but he kind of, he brings a lack of clarity to the film too, because ostensibly he's from the government. And it's not just implied, it's actually stated at one point that he is. The problem is, it's not really shown to what extent the government still exists, or if the world still exists. And the the reason that's a problem is because they kind of start to tease this wider world, you know, this bigger story, but there's just no payoff for it. So it's just kind of like, well, just don't even bring it up then. You know, just have him be this creepy scientist who's doing weird shit because he's a weirdo. Don't bring in the government and then have nothing come from it. It's it's really odd. It's just it was distracting, honestly, to have a plot that or not not the overall plot, but a plot thread rather that didn't even lead to anything. And especially because that ties right into the military group or what appears to be a military group that hounds the heroes of the film. I mean, they're antagonized constantly by these military guys, right? Which again goes back to the scientists. So if the scientists and these military guys are the government, are they the only six left? Well, that's not true, though, because later on they bump into different soldiers. So again, you know, teasing that there's some sort of government out there, I suppose, is okay. But in an action film, you're not really trying to build intrigue, and especially when you're channeling Mad Max to the extent this film does. It just, it's dissatisfying to kind of do that to the audience. And the last thing that doesn't really work is that the end of the film there's a final shot on of course which there has to be and the sister is shot by one of the soldiers and she gets back up a few minutes later the problem is there's just too much of a either way kind of a thing where she could be undead or she's still living right because her eyes kind of change a little bit but then again her eyes change when she's controlling zombies and she'd been controlling zombies in the final battle so it's just kind of ambiguous as to did she or didn't she turn and if she did turn why is she still herself? She doesn't try to attack her brother. And why is she still able to control zombies? So my conclusion was she didn't turn. But the ambiguity there was, again, kind of dissatisfying. But anyway, the standout scene in this one is I'm going to have to go with the showdown, the final showdown, because it's a satisfying ending, but the fight is interesting, has some unique ideas on how the punches are thrown and what have you between the last soldier standing and the brother. But mostly what stands out is that this movie is Mad Max with zombies. I mean, what more do you need to hear? Just go watch it. It's totally enjoyable, and you won't regret it. But those are just my thoughts, and this has been Postmortem with Scott. If you'd like more, head on over to thesethings.org. Thanks, and have a nice night.